What's going on everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now and today we're going to talk about the hazards of living in Arizona. Let's get into it. Yeah, so the first thing I want to talk about is poisonous things. Rattlesnakes, scorpions, killer bees, all of those things are here in Arizona. That's not to mention poison ivy, poison oak, those things in the northern part of Arizona. So you don't wanna end up here in the emergency room because you encountered a rattlesnake uh, and you just didn't give the rattlesnake your spa its space or you walked by it uh, too closely in a bush and a rock. So I just wanna point that out. Uh, when you're out in the desert, especially when it's hot, those reptiles do come out, even the Gila monsters. So pay attention. And we've talked about this several times on the channel before, heat stroke, staying hydrated, staying out of the sun. You can see the sun is coming down onto me very bright right now. That's a very bright sun, even here in April, in spring. Just imagine what that sun will do to you when it's the middle of July or the middle of August or even June. That sun gets really bright. And uh, right now it's the evening time, so it's not even as bright as it can be when it's peak hours at three o'clock in the afternoon the hottest part of the day. So if you are out working in your backyard, that sun will creep up on you really quickly if you're not hydrated. Sometimes you'll start feeling lightheaded or something like that. That's heat stroke coming on and you don't wanna to get to a point where you go beyond the point where there's no return and then you end up having to go over to the Mayo Clinic or one of the hospitals or emergency centers across the valley. Uh, so being aware of the damage and the heat uh, from the sun that comes from that really important. The next environmental hazard I want to talk about is allergies. You can see these blooms on these desert plants out here. There's a lot of people that I know who really struggle with allergies. You'll see the comments below on this video where people are saying, yes, the allergies are a thing out here in Arizona. I know many people who actually have been told by doctors that they shouldn't live in Arizona down in the desert areas because of allergies. So you do have this problem with uh, these blooms and dust, the spores that are in the air. Some people get valley fever. So there is an environmental hazard and a danger with the dust and the flowers blooming out here that I want you guys to be aware of because if you start noticing something's off, it might just be your allergies or the dust in the air. Also pay attention to haboobs. These haboobs come in and they bring a lot of dust and in there can be spores of the fungus from valley fever. One of the most hazardous things you're gonna do in Arizona every single day is drive your vehicle. You can see I'm driving the vehicle right now. I've got my seatbelt on, I got my eyes on the road, my cell phone is away from me because I don't wanna be distracted in driving, but that doesn't mean that other drivers on the road aren't texting and driving. And we do have a problem with wrong way drivers out here. Uh, not just speeding drivers because that's a big thing, but the just the general uh, vibe that people have out here when they're driving. I've heard people say that wherever they came from, they thought the drivers out there were really bad and crazy. And then they come out here and they're like, the drivers in Arizona are on a whole other level. So, uh, you know, I've talked about this a couple of times. They're not the, I know that driving all across the country, there is, you know, crazy driving in New York and LA, but out here, that's a thing, really. Hazardous driving. Now this goes without saying, and many of you already know about this because you asked me, you say, hey, is what parts of Phoenix are safe? Is Arizona safe? Is Tucson safe? I heard Tucson's not safe. I heard certain areas of Phoenix aren't safe. Knowing your surroundings, where the dangerous areas are around Phoenix. Some people would say, just go online, type in the most dangerous areas in Phoenix and the whole list will come up. Type into Google, the most dangerous areas in Arizona, the list will come up. So knowing the safe spots, as you can see where I'm at here in North Phoenix, up by Desert Ridge, North Scottsdale here, really a safe place. You can see around me, I'm really relaxed. There's nothing that I should be concerned about. But knowing your surroundings and knowing the dangerous areas, they would say South Phoenix is dangerous, but depending on who you talk to, they might not agree. So we talked about poisonous creepy crawlies, but what about cactus? So there's cactus out there that'll get you, uh, whether it's the cactus that pierces right through your flip-flops into the bottom of your feet or through the soles of your shoe, because some of those cactuses are actually long enough, those cactus 
uh, burrs or those cactus thorns. They, they can go right through your shoes. But the one that I'm going to really point out, and I've talked about this on a few videos, but because not everyone has seen those, is the Choya cactus, the staghorn cactus. Those cactuses will get in you. Uh, in fact, the barrel cactus actually has poisonous thorns in it. So uh, cactuses are something that you're going to want to get familiar with. Even if you're walking in the desert barefoot, you're going to get those little burrs in your foot. So thorny plants all across the desert out here, it is a thing. And in northern Arizona, they have the same kind of deal. So this should really go without saying, but watching your kids around water, making sure in the summertime, uh, everyone out here has a pool. Well, not everyone. I mean, maybe 70% of the homes have access to a pool, whether it be at their apartment complex or in their own backyard. A lot of people have pools and you can't really take your eyes off toddlers because they can drown. But also when you go to the lakes and the rivers, you know, do you understand the currents that exist in the Verde River, maybe in April or May, whereas maybe you go there in August and the Salt River doesn't have the rapids? Depends on what river you're going to, but the Colorado River might have strong currents at different times of the year. So understanding the, the currents of the river and then also the lakes, uh, they have some uh, drowning risks that can occur. So be aware of that. Before you go to a lake, know who you can call in the event of an emergency. Staying on the same path with the wildlife out here, coyotes, mountain lions, javelinas. I've shown you guys in other uh, videos what kind of wildlife we really do have out here. The bobcats, which are known as the wildcats, right? The Gila monsters, I already talked on the reptiles, but having, the, having an awareness about what kind of animals are out there. Did you know we have black bears? We don't have grizzly bears. The last grizzly bear was actually uh, taken out many years ago, but we still do have black bears out there. We don't have wolves, but we have coyotes. So understanding the wildlife that's out there, you're going to be okay when it comes to these mammals, but you have to be aware. And this is something that comes up quite a bit. Flash floods. Watching out for the monsoons. Monsoons, they can actually have strong gusts of wind, microbursts, sometimes even funnel clouds will form. The haboobs, we already talked about that earlier. But the big thing that you got to watch out for is the flash floods. So when you see a big rainstorm happening and you're downstream and you're crossing a river or a wash, there could be a wall of water coming and that's how you end up getting these people who are flushed down the wash or flushed down the river. You hear about it almost every single year. Someone got wiped down the river or washed down the wash, the creek, what have you. So you got to watch out for flash floods out here, especially during monsoon season, but it can happen any time of the year. And here's another one that's really big, getting lost hiking. Uh, also getting too close to edges at the Grand Canyon at Horseshoe Bend. People get too close to the edges. They want to take pictures or they want to look down or they want to climb out to a ledge just to get a better view or a better picture. You got to be careful with that because every year we hear stories about people who fell off the cliff at the Grand Canyon, at Horseshoe Bend, in Canyon de Chez, or other places around the state. So when you're hiking, you also have to keep in mind that you could get lost out there because you don't necessarily know your bearings. So having a GPS on you is really important. And I stress this uh, environmental hazard of hiking with you right now as a, actually a top priority to pay attention to. Out here in the Southwest, in Arizona in particular, California, you know about the brush fires, but out here in Arizona, we had a big fire last year. We've had many fires. If you guys have seen the movies out there, uh, some of those movies are filmed about fires that happened out here in Arizona because they've been, there's been a, quite a few tragedies where firemen were killed and caught in firestorms. But the brush fires out here, especially during a drought or a winter that where we don't get a lot of rain and then the summer comes along and we're still dry, there's a lot of embers out there ready to burn, combustible uh, sticks, whatever you have out there. And those fires take off and they go long distance and last sometimes up to two weeks. So fires out here can be a real problem. And if you're in an area that's real rural, when that fire breaks out, you'll have a fire possibly burning down your home. So understanding the fire dangers and taking those signs that you see around there, the state when it says fire danger high, fire danger elevated, paying attention to that, putting out your campfire when you go camping, really important. So I'll stress that one with you right now. 
And just like any other state, we have older infrastructure, older homes, older buildings that have asbestos and other problems that come along with old builds. So paying attention to that, also getting mold and other things, termites in the house can be an issue out here in Arizona. Up next on this list is people with firearms. Arizona is a open carry state. It's very gun owner friendly. Uh, people can own a gun basically within 10 minutes. A very small uh, background check is required. Uh, if any sort of background check and they can walk out of the store, the gun shop with a gun. So with that being said, when you're on the road, realize that people could be packing heat. So uh, I would say that is an environmental hazard, knowing that people, if you get too aggressive with them uh, at a nightclub or on the road, they could act in self-defense with a gun potentially. Hopefully they don't, but just be aware of that. So in conclusion, out here in Arizona, you're gonna wanna pay attention to those environmental hazards that we just touched on. Obviously there's issues with rodents and uh, different things that you may need to be protected against like tetanus shots and whatnot. But for the most part, we touched on a lot of the environmental hazards and I hope you guys take something away from this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Watch some of these other videos here. All right.